Hello, what's going on? It is uh, Doug Cunnington here. This is the, I don't know, we'll call it the Doug Show Live. Today, we're going to be doing some uh, keyword research, competition analysis, and a handful of other things, looking at content with a tool called Sunudo. So let me know in the chat if you can hear me. It usually works, but not always. And it's great to get confirmation from the live audience. Welcome, everyone, by the way. If it's your first time here, let me know in the chat. Let me know where you're from and all that good stuff. And we have, uh, looks like uh, Endula is here from Kenya. It says, and Edward is here and Daniels. And people can hear me, which is great. So we're gonna demo a tool today called Sunudo and it's a uh, sponsor of the show. So that this uh, live stream is brought to you in part by Sunudo and we thank them for the support, there's a link in the show notes here, so you can get over to it. And we have Mr. Techie on. Oh, Mr. Techie, I saw you you left a comment uh, recently, and I appreciate that. And Nassim is here as well. And I just finished recording a three podcasts. I was going to say a couple podcasts, but I actually recorded three of them for my other show called Mile High Fi. My friend Carl Jensen was over here, and... It's, uh, it's always fun to do those recordings. It's about personal finance and financial independence, but also like some lifestyle topics. So the show that'll come out, or the shows that we recorded today, they'll come out through December overall. But I encourage you to check out that show if you dig these. It's kind of the, the other side. Uh, you know, once you've uh, reached financial independence, once you're you know past the side hustle stuff, those are some of the things that we think about. So it's pretty fun. Carl was over here and we got to record some stuff. Today is filled with meetings. I have booked myself uh, pretty solid for, for the day. And I, I have this live stream. And then later I have a meeting catching up with another show that I produce for the Mile High Fi Network. So I'll be talking to that host over there and see what's going on with him and his crew. And then a couple others. I'm actually doing an interview later today with Ariel Phoenix, which I think if you're watching this, you probably have seen her channel. You've seen her interviews on this channel as well. So I'm catching up with her on the November update. So just very, very full day. Many of my days are not full at all. And I kind of I put most of the work on Tuesday and Wednesday. It doesn't happen often, but I was going to say maybe once a month or so, Tuesday or Wednesday is quite full. So this is something you have to juggle, but it makes the day, you know, it's kind of good to be busy sometimes. It makes the day go a little bit faster occasionally. Oh, and our good friend, David. David, it's been a little while. Good to see you, buddy. And uh, David is one of our fine moderators keeping order in the chat, which is, you know, thankfully it's been very orderly in the chat for many sessions. I think there was a time where uh, trolls would hop on and they would start, uh, you know, messing with us. <laughs> but these days there's not as many trolls getting the live streamers and it's uh, it's been good. So today, like I said, we're going to use Sunudo and there's a couple, you know, a couple details to cover, a couple housekeeping items. So quick intro. So Sunudo is basically, um, you know, a content marketing type app. It covers a lot of different things. There's some more details here and it'll help you with content planning, content creation, and then monitoring and optimization of SEO for your site. And over the last couple of years, Sunudo has achieved success in the Central European market, Polish, from what I understand, and they're expanding to other markets. And if you wanna help support these live streams, hop over there. The thing is you can sign up for a free trial with Sunudo. So you don't even have to enter your credit card information. You can just sign up, create an account and start using it and check it out. And I would love it if you did. Uh, again, there, there's no skin off your back. It's uh, just a uh, free trial. You just sign up, you check it out for 14 days. And I've been testing it out for a few weeks and we're gonna do some demos with it. Other bit of housekeeping, if you wanna sign up for the email notifications from me and my email list, which are more reliable, slightly more reliable than 
the YouTube notifications. There's a link in the description. It's the first one listed there. So if you want to be informed when I go live, you should sign up there. We also have a couple other sponsors. One is Otis Global, the source for premium age domains. We'll look at the feature domain a little bit later. And finally, we have Ezoic. Again, much appreciated their, uh, or I appreciate their sponsorship very much. And they have a new product called uh, Niche IQ or Niche IQ. I go with Niche just because that's what I've stuck with. And basically, it's a tool for niche sites and it's made to help you find topics and manage your pages specifically to grow quality visits and revenue from display ads. There are built-in reporting and analytics so you can measure the performance of your SEO efforts on the bottom line by understanding the relationship between the ranking, the traffic, where you rank in Google, and your revenue, which is the important part. You could also run and complete tests on titles and descriptions. So you could hop over there and check out Ezoic if you don't have much traffic, that's okay. You could actually sign up with Access Now because there are no minimum uh, traffic minimums overall. So thanks to Ezoic. All right. So we're going to look at Sunudo. And now I'm a new user to Sunudo. So I'm going to go through a couple things. Uh, there are many different tools. There are different sort of categorizations. And I'll show you that. And one thing I actually I'll start sharing my screen here in just a minute, but there there's a sort of content uh, planning, creation, and then tracking area, and very powerful set of tools. It'll help you with keyword clusters and content clusters and silos or however you want to describe it. It'll help you optimize the content and track it afterwards so you can see where you're ranking and that sort of thing. The reason why I'm mentioning it is because it's so sophisticated and it's pulling data, it actually takes a little while for some of the data to be acquired and then processed and analyzed. So what I've done, I planned ahead for today. So it won't be super, super thorough, but basically some of these tasks might take hours, several hours. That's obviously extremely boring for a live stream. So I'll show you uh, little segments of what you would do, and then I'll show you the finished product. You can imagine it like a cooking show. Actually, I love cooking shows. So someone will go over and, and put the batter in the oven and then they'll close the oven and then they'll open the other oven and say, all right, you know, he, here's the finished cake. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to save us a lot of time. I'm not going to uh, wait for the data to be gathered. We'll just kind of jump from, uh, you know, one process to another. And there's some stuff that is hundred percent standalone as well. And we'll look at those too. So again, this tool is called Sunudo and we'll hop over. I'll start sharing my screen here. Zach's on as well. What's up, Zach? Good to see you. Been a couple weeks. All right. So I'll start sharing my screen. And here's Sunudo again. You could sign up for a 14 day free trial. Highly encourage it. It helps support the show, of course. And you could check it out. So, what we're looking at here is sort of the, the main content suite. I'm not going to read this verbatim, but you can see it's the, the planner, the writer, and the tracker. And essentially the planner helps you come up with a content plan and the idea is to build topical authority. So like I said, it can give you a lot of ideas on how to set up a silo or a cluster to build that topical authority. Then you could take that, go over to the writer and it helps you optimize the on-page content essentially. So it'll help you understand what to put in for subheadings, uh, different sections, and you know generally what words to include. And then finally, the tracking, pretty much straight up, you know, keyword um, ranking tracker, which is really important. It's surprising sometimes that people don't track that sort of thing. Um, well, it's it's tough sometimes because you don't want to get too buried in analytics, but at the same time, some people get. A little too caught up in the metrics and they forget to do some of the work <laughs> and they check their rankings and analytics multiple times a day, which may not be a high value activity. It's 
probably not. So, like I said, I'm a newer user to Sanudo. I've had a couple weeks to play around with it. So I'm going to do my very best. If there's something that you do have a question about, feel free to ask. The documentation, um, and there's actually a, a demo and video, and the, the support is very good. So if you have any issues um, when you're using the tool, you can just ask them. I'm not the right person to ask. I don't, uh, I haven't used every single one of the tools. So we'll just go through what I have used. So first off, let's head over to the con or yeah, the content planner area. So content plan and my current plans. So we're going to go over here. We'll look at my current plans. So we'll just see what's out there. So we have and I'm, I'm using Niche Site Project, which is my blog. So there's a couple areas that I set up and I actually left everything. I didn't do everything right um, the first time. So I could, I could show you a couple things. So number one, I have this content plan where sort of the seed, you know, root topic area that I wanted to explore was Niche Site. So again, it's for Niche Site Project. Then I'll just go ahead and open this up and we can see what we have. So... Basically, what you do is you create a new content plan, you put in the site, your site, and then you could put in a couple keywords. So I put a niche site and authority site, and it will give you a list of potential article ideas. So all of these are selected by default, but not all of them do apply. And you know, you can filter them based on the search volume the number of keywords associated with that topic, for example. And you could also adjust the correlation of the keywords to the original topic. So obviously there's just a little a slider here. So you can make it very broad over here and you end up with 817 article ideas, or you can make it fairly narrow. You end up with 39, um, even more narrow let's see, seven. So that's extremely narrow and we want to kind of widen it up. And 182 seems, you know, roughly appropriate. Quite a few to go through. We're not going to go through all of them here today, but that's the idea. So what you, what I would recommend is, you know, you could deselect these here. You can add a filter that makes sense for you. And you could do it on like search volume, for example, you can have a specific keyword that you look for, the number of keywords, for example. So if you were going after really long tail uh, keywords, then you maybe would set up a filter to have a lower search volume. So we could say, you know, less than, we'll say 1000 if we wanted to go after some longer tail keywords. So that would help. So we narrow it down here. So we have 127. And then maybe we want to add another filter here. And maybe look for greater than four words. So we just end up with sort of longer phrases that maybe are more specific. So here we've we've narrowed it down a little bit. And you could, you know, save filters um, and that sort of thing. So this is what you do with the content planner. And then once you get here, right, it'll, uh, you know, you can select the ones that you want and it'll create that content plan. And we see, uh, oh, we also have Matt. I haven't said your name out loud here. Uh, Matthias. Matthias. I think I got it right. You can let me know. And he's one of the, the crew over at Sunudo. Okay. So once you have your content plan, and again, some of these things take a little while to do. So to create a content plan, Sunudo is gathering a lot of data, so it can take a little while, a couple hours for this to happen and set it up. So one thing you can have a look at, right? So I'll open this content plan, which I did for the keyword golden ratio here. So in this case, I only selected three articles, not very many, but it's kind of a narrow topic, but I just picked a couple to look at. So here we have each one of these articles and some metrics to consider. So we have the relevancy, we have the 
traffic potential, the number of keywords associated with it, the average position that my site has, as well as the total search volume for everything. So you have uh, some different information here, and I tried to make them distinctly uh, sort of different. So we have keyword research for YouTube, keyword golden ratio tool, and semantic keyword research. So again, we have you know information about each one of these keywords, potential um, traffic, for example, and then the search volume. So we can kind of prioritize how we want to approach this. So when we look at the total search volume, we see 2,400 searches per month. Maybe there's some potential on this one, you know, for more traffic. And we can see from the sheer numbers, the potential traffic is clearly much higher for keyword research dealing with YouTube. Okay, so we'll take a look there in a second. We also have Masher on and Michael as well. So appreciate you guys hopping on. And we have, uh, again, Matt from Sanudo. So let's take a look at this keyword research on YouTube and see what we're looking at. So when you click on open, it gives us a little bit more information here. So again, we see the same sort of metrics here. Um, there are snippets and uh, direct answers as well, people also ask. And we also see the seasonal trends here, just the 12 month average, which is always good to see. It's sort of interesting that the searches go up quite a bit <laughs> in the fall, which I'm not 100% sure why, but that's what the data says. So as we scroll down here, we can see other keywords associated with it and how it breaks down search volume wise on a per keyword phrase basis. And what we realize here, there's a couple ways to write it, but it essentially means the same thing. So really, you know, keyword research on YouTube for YouTube, and generally a lot of these kind of roll into one. Now, keyword research tool for YouTube is a little bit different. So that's good to note, but you kind of see where you can group some of these together and it makes sense to do it and others are a little bit different. And then here we have some with years in there. So, you know, maybe not as applicable. Some more about uh, research tools specifically. So it kind of breaks down and, you know, we have 27 keywords listed, but I would say there's probably, you know, four main topics and you can group many of them together. One other thing is a question. So for this one, because it's narrow, we don't see many questions. There's another, another one that, that I do have set up for us that there are questions. So we can hop over there. So let's go back to the planner and the content plans. We'll have a look at affiliate marketing. That's another one that I put together. And I chose 17 articles here. There are 245 keywords associated with it with this sort of a cluster. However, just like the other one, there will be many that kind of get lumped together. So 17 articles, maybe even some of these articles can be put together, but generally we can imagine like an affiliate marketing content cluster and these given topics. So, and I'm actually gonna zoom in just a little bit, which I'll try to remember to zoom back out in a second. But again, we see the same kind of information here as before. So we have various metrics, potential traffic, a relevancy score, and the total search volume. So very useful and it helps us prioritize based on the amount of traffic that we can get, which is cool. We also see um, article categories over on the left side over here. The thing is, there, a lot of them are in other. So I did choose uh, several that didn't line up with sort of the broad topics, which is okay. You know, those fit somewhere and you probably can come up with some ideas associated with those other, you know, quote, other topic areas and be good to go. So again, same kind of information here. So I'm not going to go on too much, but there's a lot of different areas in this one. So we have Affiliate marketing on Pinterest with ClickBank, YouTube, best WordPress theme for affiliate marketing, best affiliate marketing niches, 
Google ads and affiliate marketing, affiliate marketing sites for sale. So some of these are more commercially driven. Some of them, you know, like a place like Empire Flippers or FE International would want to rank for affiliate marketing websites for sale. But I could put together a post where I list all the places that you can sell them and have kind of a review site, which could be really valuable. And if I am coming at it from a legitimate review standpoint, I could actually provide good information. So maybe that would be something to approach. Anyway, there's a lot of them here. Uh, Affiliate marketing for travel versus AdSense, how to get traffic for affiliate marketing. So let's scroll back up to one of these just so we can see a little bit more information. So for beginners, affiliate marketing for beginners, again, same kind of information as before. We have the seasonality noted and the breakdown of the various keywords. Some of them go together and we can group them and some of them do not. We'll click on questions just to see. So can you do affiliate marketing for free? How can a beginner do affiliate marketing? Three of the best, uh, what are three of the best affiliate marketing? So that one kind of is truncated, but we get the idea. So there are some questions associated with these keywords. Great, okay. So from here, let's go back to just the overall planner area. So this is where you put together the content plan. You can have a cluster of content related to you know different content plans related to a topic area, certain keywords, et cetera. From there, you'd hop over to the writer area. And there's a a couple that I um, took a look at here. And this is where you optimize, right? So this is where I'm not going to write the whole thing. But basically, you get this uh, full sort of analysis, very similar to some other tools out there. But it tells you um, keywords potentially to use and gives you a guideline on how often to use those. So I didn't have a specific topic associated with this keyword research for YouTube title. But what you can do is you know, copy and paste your existing post into this writer area. And then it'll you know show you what keywords you have used, which ones you haven't used, which ones you haven't used enough. So if you use it enough, like search volume, it turns green. I haven't used any of these others because there's literally only 218 characters that it tells us down here. Let me zoom out just a little bit. And I haven't used YouTube enough. I could use it three to 38 times and I've only used it twice. So you can see as you use the keywords, the proper range, then everything turns green over here and your content score will go up. So again, I don't have a specific topic in this area, but this is how you would do it. And you you can copy and paste, update it, and then move it back over to WordPress or wherever you're publishing it. You can hop over here to headers and see you know, what, what to use and where. So let's see, we have the SERP analysis here. So you can go and check out the content score for what is ranking currently how long the content is, and the number of headers. And you could actually see the headers here. So it gives you a, a pretty good advantage. And this is you know, one of the things that we used to do manually. You would go and check it out and try to you know, see what other sites were doing for their, their H1 tags and H two and three, and actually the backlinko, it doesn't have as many tags as I would have expected, but this one here, like keyword tool dominator, we see the different headings that they're using. So you go take a look at the SERPs and you can get a lot more information and see, you know, number of internal links. Let me scroll over here. Yep, number of an internal links and external links as well just check them out and you could go and hop over and click on them and, and go read them yourself. So it's all right here.
So you can consider that for the headers, get some ideas and do some deeper research all within the tool. And from here, we could go into the tracker area, but it's fairly straightforward. I actually didn't set anything up, but there is a demo project that you can take a look at. And honestly, uh, from from where I from where I stand, the uh, you know rank tracking fairly straightforward. There's um, tools that I've used uh, in the past before we had a full suite like this. So you know. Pretty straightforward. You can put in your keywords. You can use the projects and, and sort of have everything tied together, which is great because then you get the full picture and kind of more of a dashboard type view. And a uh, quick shout out to uh, Michael as well. And we also have uh, Sanjay coming in with a super chat. So thanks a lot for that. So let's hop back over here and take a look at the SEO tools. So if you have been listening to the podcast, you, and you're you on my email list and you probably know I have been running some ads and I mentioned, oh, there's several tools within Sunudo. So this is the SEO tools area. There, Here are all of them listed, but you, know, you can look at them in individual areas. So the SERP analysis, you can check out the competition, you have the top 100 crawlers, so you can check domains and URLs in the top 100 for selected keywords. And we also have the URL crawler, so you can get data about the content length, the headings, the other HTML elements for the listed URLs. So basically, you could you know, specifically check what's going on with certain competitors and get a full analysis via the URL crawl. Uh, Daniel asks... What's the optimal content score in the writer? So basically, yes, the higher, the better. And you, I think over 80 is pretty good. But yeah, the higher, the better. And it, show, it, it shows you. There's, there's some other uh, information in there. But yeah, over 80 is very good. Up next, where we'll spend a little time. is the Keyword Explorer. So we have uh, the Keyword Explorer. So you can create a list of keywords and then add them to the project tracker and basically take a look at them for content planning and maybe designing ads if you have to be running ads. We also have the Keyword Grouping tool. So you can divide and basically group keywords semantically or linguistically. So there's a couple options over there. Keyword stats. So you can look at the SEO metrics for the given keywords, kind of a traditional keyword research area and quick suggestions. So that is the simplified version of the Keyword Explorer. It allows you to get to work without taking too much time to collect your data. So we're going to do this live. I actually haven't looked at the quick suggestions, but I'm just curious what we'll see. And we'll just put in... We'll stick with the affiliate marketing area since we have been so far. So I'll put in affiliate marketing and we could put up to five. So actually let's put niche site and authority site. And I'm just using a comma in between. So authority site. And you know what? I'll put in side hustle too. Okay. So we'll see what the quick suggestions are. And we'll see how fast it is as well. And Matt confirms for us that the higher score is better for the writer and 80 is the goal. So good. I did. I didn't know that. We're still churning over here, which is cool. That is okay. And I'm just going, okay, so we're back. We're back here. So we have the suggested keyword, the parent topic, and the number of words. And the thing is, we have 5,000 results shown here. That's why it took a few minutes. As well as uh, there's 6,100 6, here. And we can sort by the first letter, which I didn't actually mean to, to do that. 
And okay, so can we get back to it? I wonder what it was sorted by before. So suggested keyword. All right, cool. So we have the quick suggestions here. We actually have a ton to choose from more than I expected. And we can look at the parent keyword. So let's see what we do from here. So we can export, we can customize this list and look at the table view. Let's see what customize does. So, okay, so we can take some of these out in the table if we want to. Okay, so cool. So you can get a ton of ideas here. So what probably I would do, or what I would do most likely is export this and then move it into the tool. So you can think of you know the quick suggestion, sort of like getting a huge number of keywords that you would need to sort through later. So let's go back to the SEO tools, back to keyword, Explorer, and we'll just go to Keyword Explorer and see what we have. So let's see if we can use our recent queries here. So we'll put a niche site and affiliate site. So this is a more traditional view that we would uh, think about. We have Jay Paul is on as well. What's up, guys? And here, we have the Keyword Explorer, we have the average search volume, the CPC, peak season, and the low season here. We could also adjust the keyword relationship. So these are pretty narrow, but if we make it a little more broad, then we end up with more results here. So we'll, we'll actually keep it a little tighter because we went from 429 to thousands. So we'll stick with close relationship and then we have, again, sort of the traditional things we expect to see, the search volume uh, variations here, and the trend line, CPC, the number of words. So from here, you can uh, select these and you could export it. You can add it to like probably your content plan here. You could add it to a group or to a project. So you can kind of group things up and let me get rid of that. So we could dive in a little bit more generally, but yeah, so you have hundreds of ideas, pretty standard information here, and you can go through the various pages. You could also check out questions. So of course, these are all the, the questions listed 18 of these pop up. So how to build a site, how to build an affiliate marketing site, an Amazon site, and so on. If you click on one of those, it'll dive in and give us a little bit more information. So this one, how to start an Amazon affiliate site. We have the trends. We have the number of searches. Um, sometimes I think this is a pretty narrow topic. So the topic leaders, there may not be many things popping up here. As we scroll down, we see other keyword suggestions, the ones that are semantically connected, questions associated with it, and word groups, which is still churning over here as well. We also have the SERP analysis, which is showing us uh, make a website hub, the balances MB, and niche site project is actually listed there. That's cool. I didn't even realize that. So if we open it up, we see the keywords, um, I believe, that are ranking for that given term for a niche site project. We also have niche pursuits, authority hacker, niche hacks. How, what, what is this? How am I ranking ahead of those guys? How to start an Amazon affiliate site. That's amazing. We need more people searching for that, huh? <laughs> so... So you could dive in and check out the SERPs. And again, this is within, once you click uh, one of the keywords, this there's the detail, right? All these details for the specific keyword and uh, Rye Rob and so on. So actually ranking decent, just it's very specific. There's not, not enough people searching for that one. So when we hop back here, this is the main 
questions uh, listed here. So you can also go to related keywords. And word groups, which we'll hit in a second. So related keywords, just what you would expect. We have the parent keyword listed here. And there are a couple pages of that. Let's check out the next one as well. So it takes a second to load. And most of these are, are associated with a niche site. But you get the general idea. Lots of information here. We can see the common commonality factor as well. So as normal, many of these can group together. Some of them are a little different. So like niche sites for sale. A lot of them are around building a niche site. SEO niche site is a little bit different, but again, you know, there's a handful that would sort of group together. So let's check it out if we look at word groups. So we have these different groups here, the number of keywords associated with them, the average number of searches, and the total search volume, that's the searches sum. So as we scroll down, we see, you know, some of these, you know, site in doesn't quite make sense. So some of these aren't really valid. So, you you know, you sort through the ones that make sense and you deal with those. So what's a, what's a good one to take a look at here? How about, I think, I, yeah, Amazon affiliate. So this is one, obviously, that I'm super interested in and we click more, it'll open it up and give us more information about this word grouping. The number of searches, the variation, CPC, the trend, the number of keywords. It also tells us if there's a snippet or any kind of uh, other sort of rich um, details here in the SERPs. So again, a lot of these do group together, but some of them will be a little bit separate or more associated with each other. So this one is around SEO for Amazon sites, for example. And like normal, you can click into the details and see the number of searches, the SERPs, the topic leaders in the area, for example, as well as other details related to, I guess, related keywords. So keyword suggestions, semantically, connected and questions. So in word groups, of course, and then you could also, you know, dive into the SERP analysis as well. So it's always good, you know, if you see one that looks pretty good to go from there. All right. And Jason says, do you have a simple rule of thumb to confirm the intent of a keyword on the fly? Not, not in a quick way. So not in a quick way. And I, I think if you're slightly aware of the niche, most of the time it'll probably be obvious. If you're not sure, then that's where it gets a little a little tricky. But I would argue, you know, if you're sticking with things that you're familiar with, it should be fairly straightforward. But I don't have a quick way to filter those out. So like for affiliate and sites for how to is a little potentially too general, but I have a feeling it may actually blow up to something yeah, how to start, how to build. And, you know, in that case, like those kind of group up with the other keywords around building a site, right? So those are the general ideas. And we do have the summary here, but as you can see, tons of keywords that you can approach. And if you wanted to, you could expand, you know, even further here and look at keywords that aren't as closely correlated. One thing you could do, right? So if we do make it more general, now we have 6,500 keywords to sort through. Maybe in that case, you do want to filter. And that's often how I do um, sort through things. And, you know, there are some predefined filters. So maybe we want to go after long tail keywords, right? So it's looking for a word count over you know, more than three, three or more words. And that does, you know, narrow it down a little bit, but not a huge, huge amount. So maybe we can go for niche keywords as well. 
and let, let's see, let's stack those together. So again, it narrows it down, but not as much as we would hope. So I would potentially go for a search volume. So they're saying less than 50. So I would maybe go there. No, oh, keyword search volume, we already had that in there. So we'll add the number of words and we'll say more than four to really go deeper. So now we're down to 2200, which is a lot more approachable. And then one other thing we might do is look at the actual keyword and say, you know, contains, uh, actually we'll say it contains Amazon. So this should narrow it down quite a bit, but we're looking very closely at exactly what we're interested in. So now we went from 6,500, now we're at 252. Long tail keywords, four or more than four words long, so five words long and contains Amazon. So now we're looking only at like the keywords that are really closely related. So let me get rid of the number of searches, uh, the, the extra one that we have. And I'm just curious if we bump it up to like 100, what, what it changes. It, yeah, so less than 100. So we'll still probably have a few hundred keywords to deal with, but maybe not as many. So I need to remove the old filter. And so we have 271 and now, you know, a few that are higher um, search volume. So up to a hundred and we have like WordPress themes for Amazon affiliates. So some of these are associated with each other. So this, this is how I would sort of narrow it down. So we went wider, we filtered down and we've kind of identified like what we want to work with here. All right. A couple quick comments. So we have, uh, Michael says, I think in response to Jay Paul, understand the differences between informational, navigational, transactional and search queries. So, and that's around confirming the intent of a keyword. So Michael says, if you can mentally map those three in your head, then it'll be fairly straightforward. Cool, yeah, good point. And Henry is on, welcome Henry. So quick note, if you're just hopping on, we're taking a look at Sunudo, sponsor of this live stream. And they've been, uh, we've been working together a little bit for the last few weeks. So you can get a 14 day free. So totally free. You don't have to enter your uh, credit card information. You just have to create an account and then you can do the same stuff that I'm doing here. So this is uh, the keyword tool. And let's see some other keyword tool areas. So you can get the keyword stats. So let's check this out too. And then, so this is where you would import a list. So I don't have a list CSV handy, but this is where maybe you're brainstorming, maybe you're using another tool, maybe you're exporting a CSV from something like uh, Answer the Public or something like that, where you have just like a list of keywords. So you could import it here up to, I believe, 1,000. Yeah, so you could do 1,000 keywords and get all the, the data from those. So before we go on to the next tool, do need to give a quick shout out to Otis Global, the source for premium age domains. And basically you can get an age domain that has backlinks. It is already associated with a given niche which is really helpful. The one we're gonna take a look at today is blog on event. It is eight years old. So um, it's pretty pretty old in, in terms of the internet. Uh, it actually says eight years old, but the thing is I found, I found uh, some older history. So I think it's actually older than eight years old. 
the thing is it has uh, quite a few referring domains, 232, and eight of those are high authority. So pretty high value. And there's blog right in there. So this is a great one, especially when you look at the, the history, you can probably, you know, work with a uh, social media type content. So this site was all about social media. So I looked it up over here on the Wayback Machine. This is back from 2005. So like I said, the site's actually been around longer. So I think that's a typo over there on Otis. And this was a social media summit in 2005, which I feel like it, social media like barely existed back then. So this is way, way back. And I think you have the ability to create a, a website that has a lot of informational content on social media, how to do things. There's always like new social media platforms popping up. I know it doesn't feel like it, but if you kind of look over the course of a few years, there's new platforms popping up. Algorithm changes often on those various platforms. I think, and actually let me know in the chat and in the comments, has YouTube changed their algorithm? My suggested videos seem to be terrible these days. I'm getting a lot on gaming. I'm getting a lot on Minecraft, Pokemon, just a bunch of shit that I don't care about. And I've never watched a video on any of it. And they seem to be just like more general videos. I have no clue. I've never watched anything on those games and I have zero interest. I don't go to any websites. I don't go to any websites that deal with those games, but I'm getting terrible suggestions. And as a result, I'm watching less YouTube because it's just showing me stuff I don't want to take a look at. But anyway, you can have a lot of that information, right? So informational content. You could also have product reviews for scheduling software, right? So there's a lot of scheduling software associated with social media and those tools are often expensive. Additionally, you could also have some information on like uh, agencies that provide social media management. You could create an agency that does social media management for bigger companies as well. So depending if you wanted to focus on like reviews, software reviews, there's courses as well that you could review and send people to that and earn from affiliate commissions. Additionally, if you had skills in the social media area, you can just provide that service. <coughs> so overall, you can check out this domain over on Otis Global. I got a call. Sorry, folks, I've been talking a lot today. If you join Otis using my affiliate link, which is free, you just have to follow the link, you can get $100 into your account. And if you buy something, I might get a commission. So I really appreciate it if you do. And like I said, this, this domain has actually been around for a very long time. A lot of history, a lot of backlinks, and including CNET, we have Pro Blogger. Tech Dirt, Wired, EFF, O'Reilly.com, Search Engine Watch, and so on. Let's hop back to Sanudo here, which again, 14 day free trial out there if you want to check it out. So the other area is the tracker section. So you can compare days, you can compare uh, the SERPs in general and look at the top 10, top 20, top 50 keyword cannibalization and competition analysis as well. Let's take a look at, I don't, I don't know how long this takes to run, but let's like take a look at the cannibalization. Oh, and you know what? I don't have a report set up here, so I won't be able to check that out. But if we look just at Sunudo, this is like the, the preset report that you can check out and it shows keyword cannibalization in the two URLs. So if you're unfamiliar, cannibalization is where your site is ranking for two or more 
of uh, it's ranking in for two or more URLs for a given keyword. And most likely, if one of those uh, URLs wasn't listed, you potentially would rank higher. It's generally what happens. Again, I don't have a filter set up here for niche site project, but worth it to look at. So what you would need to do is go over to the tracker section and then create a new project. But I didn't test that earlier and I don't know how long it takes, so we're not going to look at it here. And I think probably I have to have a project set up for competition analysis as well. But, you know, you have your, your project, your given domain, and then you could put in your competitors as well and go from there. So we can take a look, see what they have for the specific report. Let's see if it takes very long to show. So there's no data for, oh, I didn't put in enough information, but that's okay. Let's hop back here over to the tracker and see if we can get any more information. So we'll do copywriter SEO, looking at just the default dates that are given and see if there's any, if we see anything here. So it shows us the positions for the two days and we see a little bit of a, a switch up here. We have Matt, Matt listed there. And unique SEO.pl. So unfortunately I, I didn't create a project here, so it's not going too far. So SERP analysis, you can go a little deeper, analyze the competition, see how your content structure helps you. Okay. So let's see. Let's check out affiliate marketing. So 110 searches per 110,000 searches per month, a lot of competitors and we can get kind of a, a view of the competition here. So we have content length and we can see who is ranking, which is kind of cool. So the position which they rank and then how long it is. So Big Commerce is listed here, 2,500 words. Neil Patel has 38,000. Investopedia has 12,000, which seems like a lot. We've got a little gap here. Number four is not listed, but we have Smart Blogger. And I'm curious, Smart Passive Income, it says 140,000 words. So I'm curious, let's take a look at that. That seems more than I expected, number one. So we have top 10 summary, content length, 25,000 words. Number two is 38. So pretty long. Let's actually look to see if Neil Patel's is indeed that long. So we're not going to count it or anything, but we'll scroll down. It looks like a long article. Whoops. Of course, we do have a pop-up here. This is Neil Patel's site after all. And yeah, so we can see it's very long. So as we scroll down, it tells us a lot about this specific content. So the average content length, we have the H2 count, the H3 count as well. We can take a look at the SERP results. So the one I really want to look at is the Smart Passive Income. And I wonder why it shows up as 140,000 words because I have a feeling it's not actually that long. So I want to open this up over here. So let's see if it's actually that long. I mean, it looks long, but not appreciably longer than the Neil Patel post. But let me zip down here and see if there's a bunch of comments or something like that. Hmm. I mean, it's long, but I don't know if it's 140,000 words. So if anyone else has a tool that could count the words quickly, that would be interesting to see. Okay. Overall, it gives you a full picture of the SERP and a lot of details, H1 count, H2 count, 
the title, the H1, and, and various other SEO-related things. And we see all the way to the top 20 results. Oh, and that's my friend's site, Affiliate. Wow, that's great. They're ranking in the top 20 for this, this keyword. Location Rebel, I know that guy too, Sean. Small world out there. Pretty tough to rank for, very competitive. Here's all the keywords, semantically connected, questions, and keyword groups. So you can see, once you start digging in, you go deeper and deeper and deeper here. So this is uh, kind of the rundown for most of the, the tools over on Sunudo. Again, if you want to take a look, there is a 14-day free trial, and I appreciate Sunudo for sponsoring this live stream and some of the podcasts that I've been recording in the last few weeks. You don't have to enter your credit card info. You just have to create an account over there, and there's a link in the description. And certainly let them know that you found about found out about Sunudo from the live streams or the Doug show otherwise. So let's hop back, and we can answer some questions here. And we have um, Paul. J. Paul says, appreciate the details from Michael. Informational navigational are fairly easy to identify. And buyer intent transactional are a little bit separate things, but not sure the exact difference. Yep. And once you do get to check out Sunudo, let me know what you think of it. You can just shoot me an email, which I actually want to have a quick quick look at here because I know that Matt sent me a little bit more information that I do definitely want to mention here. We have a tremendously long email thread. All right. So there will be two major updates for Sunudo in the content suite in 2023. There will be further development of the writer module, including AI support for content creation. It's artificial intelligence and enhanced systems for evaluating and sharing content and checking the uniqueness. So there will be updates for the writer module. Additionally, an advanced and clear summary report in the planner module so that you can learn quickly about wins to create, to increase visibility and more easily manage your network, <laughs> nope, sorry, manage your copywriter's work or your own work. I'm not sure what word I was reading there or why I got thrown off, but basically the planner module will show you about quick wins. So those are coming in 2023. I'm not sure when exactly, but those will be coming out. So you can expect improvements for Sunudo along the way. All right, and if we have other questions, please ask now. I uh, actually have a couple other other sessions, other meetings coming up. So I need, I can't, uh, I can't stay on as long. Quick plug, the Niche Lifestyle Show. A lot of people asked about the Niche Lifestyle Show. We're doing our last one tomorrow. I believe it is on Alex's channel, WP Eagle. Please tune in for that. Um, if you like the show, show up tomorrow. Tell us you like it. <laughs> we, um, we'll talk more about it tomorrow. But yeah, it was. There were various uh, there were various reasons why we decided not to do it anymore. I'm lazy. That's that was my reason. Okay, Mr. Techie says, my site is seven months old, but I didn't publish any articles. The main page is already indexed. Do you think it's out of the sandbox? If I publish articles, do you think they're going to index more quickly now? No, probably not. I think you still have to put your time in. You still have to publish content. There's a small chance... Things can index a little bit more quickly, but my hunch is probably not. It'll probably just be 
like you started your site and you started publishing things. The caveat is if there are some backlinks pointing to your site, which based on what you said, I would kind of doubt it. But if there happen to be backlinks, that potentially could help. The other is if you have traffic that can go to your site via social media. So if you have a following on social media in some way, it doesn't have to be associated directly with the site. But if you can if you can have traffic coming from social media or anywhere, actually, I mean, if you have traffic coming from any source, Google will most likely recognize that. They see the traffic going there probably. And that's a very good sign. So if it's, you know, if you somehow get a link in another website, a bigger publication, or a big publication that sends traffic, that's great. If it's a social media following, that's great. Maybe somehow you have a YouTube channel and you can send traffic from there. That's a very, very good thing to do too. But generally, if you just have a site, you put up a homepage and then don't do anything, then that's not really going to help that much. Oh, and we have Tony on from Learn Medicare Billing, who I have interviewed a couple times. And uh, Tony, I'll probably shoot you an email coming up. Line something up. Definitely want to talk about your directory site and some of the things you're working on. Uh, getting traction very fast. All right. And if you're just... If you are just hopping in, I did uh, a roughly thorough demo of Sunudo through their content suite, the planner, the writer, and the tracker. I didn't have a project set up for the tracker, so we didn't get to play with that as much. But they do have a 14-day free trial, so you can go check it out. There's a link in the description. You don't have to enter your credit card number. Essentially, it's a full suite of uh, you know content marketing tools. And very, very detailed, very powerful tool. All right, fantastic. So w one thing coming up is I'm gonna play the guitar here for a second, but in a few days, if you listen to my other show, you may already know this, but in a few days, I'm gonna be playing at a, a recital. So it's technically a kid's recital, but it's legit. It was gonna be a kid's recital, but I think uh, a lot of, uh, there's more adults now. We're all very <laughs> self-centered and indulgent, and we took it over. We're going to have a good time. And some I know some of you do listen to my other show. Um, like Andy just says, uh, you love the live streams and the podcast. Thanks, man. So the, um, the co-host, my co-host over on Mile High Five, Carl, Strong chance he's playing the keyboard, the piano. I don't play the piano. There's going to be a piano there. So um, he's going to play some stuff. I'm going to play. I don't think I'm going to play the song that I'm rehearsing for the recital. Maybe I'll save it for like a, uh, a live stream in the future. Actually, I know. I know when I'll do it. So I don't know if all the details are out. But there will be a Christmas slash holiday stream coming up somewhere. And I could play it then because I think it'll fit. I think it'll fit the, the vibe and everything. So I have been practicing and it'll be a little bit stressful. You know, there's going to be an audience. I think there's going to be about a dozen plus people or so. And uh I've only, I've been working on it for a little while, but it's a little bit it's a little bit tough. Okay, we got some questions coming in, so I'm gonna answer quick, so I can play guitar, get some food, and uh, then I can jump in for my other meetings. Okay, Mr. Techie says, how many articles uh, does a niche site need to have to make five hundred to a thousand dollars per month after eight months to a year? So. Good question. The answer is, I don't know. It's nearly impossible to answer. It could range from 20 to you know, 300 articles. I did do an interview, which Mr. Techie, you should definitely check this out. I did an interview with Mark Mars from Niche Website Builders. It was just like a week or two. It was like a week ago. 
and they did an analysis of 5,000 websites and they made some assumptions about how many articles and what domain rating is reported by Hrefs you need to have to earn $1,000 a month, $5,000 a month, and $10,000 a month. And there's some broad conclusions that were, that were drawn. That said, we talk about all the flaws with the assumptions that were made. Further, I, at this point, after a couple of weeks of doing the interview, I don't know if I agree with the assumptions because if you go look, it'll say you have to have like 300 or 400 articles to make $1,000 per month. I don't remember exactly, but it's a lot. And they did have to make assumptions to give some guidelines. However, when we start looking at examples, it's like, well, some people may have 500 articles and they're not earning much money. And then we may find an example where someone has 30 articles and they're making like $5,000 a month. And I went through a coaching call with someone a couple of weeks ago and that literally was what it was. They had 30 articles. They only had 30 articles and they pulled in like 4,000 from Amazon and like 1,000 from an ad network. Right. So you can find these extreme examples that make you wonder like where you're going to fall. So to answer your question, what you want to do, Mr. Techie, is publish as much as you possibly can with as high quality as you can in the first year, basically. Okay, so Z Shan says, I created a blog on backpack backpacks. I target best in informational articles using KGR, keyword golden ratio. It's three months old now. It's getting some traffic and impressions, but I want to add some related topics like travel, how much article and traffic to add Amazon affiliate on a blog and get some good commission. So previous answer holds true. Um, generally, just everyone publish um, really high quality content as good as you can do, as good as you can purchase, make it better. You know, if you have writers work for you, edit it yourself and publish as much as you can. Basically, that's what you should do. Publish as much as you can, as high as quality as you can. If you need some benchmarks, then you kind of can arbitrarily set them up, but the the main idea is like keep mo moving forward, keep making progress. If you could only publish once a month, that's okay. Just do once a month. When you get more time and resources, increase it. If you could publish three times a week, do that. If you could publish three times a day, then do that. So the more you publish, the the better. So everyone, thanks for hopping on. Hit the thumbs up. I, I didn't even ask... Uh, one time, I think someone in the chat did, uh, which I appreciated, but hit the thumbs up if you dig these. Thanks again to Matt from Sanudo who hopped in and helped hook all this stuff up. Really appreciate you, Matt. And we'll connect after this. Don't forget, everyone, I've said it many times, please uh, check out Sanudo 14-day free trial. You can check it out in the description. There's a link there. And if you have any questions or any trouble the tool, you're not sure how something works. The support is excellent. That is a huge uh, aspect. So you can ask questions, you can figure out how to use the tool in the best way for you. And as we wrap up here, uh, as more people are hopping on, uh, funny enough, I'm going to play music just for a second, just for fun. Again, this whole thing is just self-indulgent. So if you don't want to hear me play guitar, then it is okay. Let me move this baby over here. It's okay. It's not for everybody. I'm not even sure what I'm going to play today. I put on new strings yesterday. So I'm not sure if it's in tune.
Mm-hmm.